How a violent arrest has a school policy under scrutiny. Uh, uh, I mean, it is New York Times. And what Americans consider graphic violence. Uh, <clears throat> right Uh, I browsed through, I didn't see anything weird. I mean, we're not watching the whole thing, but I browsed the start. Really. In September, this footage emerged from okay. Eastridge High School near start. Chattanooga, Tennessee. It shows an armed school resource officer pulling a student, Taurus Sledge, by his hair and throwing him into bleachers. It started because he didn't want to play kickball. 24 hours later, there was another altercation at a Hamilton County school involving a 15-year-old girl. Both students were arrested. Yeah, it's not the really... The videos show how armed officers hired to prevent gun violence bad. are increasingly responding to student misbehavior, and students who would normally face detention or suspension are instead facing criminal charges. We took a closer look at the Taurus Sledge case to understand how things escalated and how the criminalization of behavior in school can have a lasting impact. It's a heavy burden, like being a principal and, and being a superintendent with 45,000 kids. I would say safety is probably the heaviest burden that, that we bear. Dr. Justin Robertson is the school superintendent in Hamilton County. In June, two weeks after a mass shooting in Uvalde, Texas, killed 19 students and two teachers, he asked the school board for more funding to expand an existing school safety program and put an officer in each of his 79 schools. We're requesting your support in pulling $950,000 from fund balance to get enough SSOs to cover every campus in Hamilton County. Board members unanimously approve. I think this is a no-brainer. It's just absolutely a no-brainer. Yes, I absolutely agree. School resource officers, or SROs, are now one of the fastest growing areas of law enforcement. Active duty officers are now present in an estimated 70% of high schools, as more and more school districts turn to police to keep students safe. But police body camera footage shows that what happened to Taurus Sledge had little to do with school safety. On September 20th, Taurus said he wasn't feeling well and sat out as his classmates played kickball. When they later started playing basketball, he joined in. When the gym teacher confronted him, they got into a verbal argument. The school's resource officer, Tyler McRae, who'd been on the job for roughly six weeks, came to intervene. Things quickly escalated. Come on, man, get your stuff. Let's go. Within 10 minutes, McRae threatened to arrest him. You finna take a ride to jail, dude. I ain't with you. Who the fuck is you talking about ride to jail? I ain't you to begin with. It's called disorderly conduct. Disorderly conduct. You ain't and let's go. Down. All right, man. Take the backpack off. We finna go to jail. Don't resist me, dude. What is it? Don't, Don't resist me. Don't do it. I got you. No, I think it was some shoving or some shit. Spray. Take it off. Take the bag off. I'm going to spray you again. By the end of the day, Taurus was taken to jail and charged with disorderly conduct, resisting arrest, and assault. Because he was 18, he faces charges as an adult. His classmates responded by walking out of class, and video of the arrest was met with outrage online. He drugged down the bleachers by his hair. In front of other students, it's humiliating. Why would you call the police on a kid that does not feel good, that don't want to participate? Sick to my stomach. Yeah, just really uh, concerned uh, that a child would have that experience in one of our schools. Sonia Stewart is the deputy superintendent for Hamilton County Schools. Kid. 
while supportive of yeah. police officers in school. She year says of what fucking happened to Taurus school, violated county guidelines, yeah, yeah, which say kid, that officers no. should only intervene when students break the law or threaten school safety. The SRO was responding to a situation that was a discipline situation, and I think the school had multiple opportunities before engaging the SRO to have handled that situation differently. But the line between school safety and school discipline isn't always clear. At a time when juvenile arrest rates are declining across the country, arrests in public schools are rising and black students are disproportionately punished. When someone is resisting arrest, there's rarely a way for us to make that look good. Mo Kennedy is a former SRO and executive director of the National Association of School Resource Officers. The situation of when you put your hands on someone, that just varies from case to case. It seems to me the officer was trying to initially calm things out, and then it, it escalated. Studies show that students arrested in school are increasingly being charged with disorderly conduct, a charge that varies from state to state and is subject to interpretation. What the state criminal code says disorderly conduct is, is what it is, okay? Whether it's on a school campus or whether it's out on the street. As a former SRO, the last place I want to be is at juvenile court booking a student for disorderly conduct and an active assailant situation happens on my campus while I'm doing that. That's, that's something that we as SROs really have to process and think about. What happened to Torres Sledge was not an isolated incident. And for younger students who've been arrested in school, the case has touched a nerve. The East Ridge footage, when did you first see it? I saw it on somebody's Snapchat story. And then I went and looked it up and kind of read about it and watched it and saw it on YouTube. And I was like, okay, it happened again. Miles is a junior in high school. He had his first encounter with law enforcement at school when he was just 12 years old. In 2018, he got into a verbal argument with an assistant principal who asked an SRO to intervene. The officer grabbed him by the arm to try to stop him from walking away. And according to police, that's when Miles became combative. It was just like playing football. I mean, if somebody coming at you to block you and you don't see it, it's just like you're getting grabbed up and there's nothing you can do about it. He was handcuffed, then taken to juvenile hall. Like Torres, he was charged with disorderly conduct, resisting arrest and assault. You can tell that he had been crying for hours. <sighs> the fact that these NA schools need these guys. Hello, guys. 